my name is Hayden Ayod, uh, as um, rightfully introduced. And um, this morning, I'm going to be speaking on uh, the purpose and the roles of branding in marketing for business growth. Now, the truth is, uh, we are all here to learn. And first and foremost, permit me to say a very big thank you to my brother Kenny Odea and me. On a serious note, uh, if you are going to pay for this particular conference and you are going to pay for the value you are going to get or have gotten so far. You know it comes in hundreds of thousands of naira, but um, this man took it upon himself to make it free for everybody. So I think he deserves um, a round of applause to him and his team. Okay, so uh, the question most people ask me is what is branding? And um, I try as much as possible not to be um, a dictionary kind of person. In other words, I try as much as possible to bring anything I'm teaching or I try to drive it very home such that you can easily understand. Now, branding in simple terms simply means the totality of experience people get as a result of affiliating with your brand. So in other words, um, you are the third invasion, right? The totality of the experience you're getting from third invasion, it's what branding simply talks about. Now, uh, there are a couple of key factors that are actually responsible for that, and that is where we're going to go straight into my slide. Okay, so there are three major defining factors, or should I call them three major components, to build every successful brand or a great brand. The first one there is what identifies. Then the next thing, attributes. And the last one is what association. Now, all three comes hand in hand. They work hand in hand. And I took out time to arrange them in chronological order so that you will know that before you jump to the um, attributes and the association, you have to go with the identifiers. Identifiers are the tangible aspects of branding that you get to see for every visible, for every brand you know today, so to speak. Uh, don't worry about writing too much. The slides are going to be made available. All I just want you to do is catch the spirit and catch everything I'm going to be saying here this morning. So let's go straight to the identifiers. Now, um, for identifier, the first thing there is what is a brand name. Now, as a brand connoisseur, I always advise people that when you're going to name a brand, try to use a name that is generic and a name that is very, very simple and easy to remember. Now, the reason is this. Human attention span is dwindling by the day. We have so many things that are actually uh, taking our attention. Your phone is beeping per minute, per second, and all of that. And you don't want to compound people's problems by giving them a very long name to now begin to remember. That is why even brands that have longer names have looked for ways to shorten it. Um, permit me, I'm going to be calling names because uh, I have to be very practical with this teaching. Uh, the whole idea of my session is to actually teach you on how to become a brand and strategist. Now, it doesn't mean that after this particular session, you now go around town and be priding yourself to be a brand strategist. There has to be a lot of work. You have to do a lot of research. Um, Kenny said you need to volunteer. So if you want to be in the digital marketing space, I think you should approach Kenny after this particular meeting to say, hey, I want to volunteer, I want to be an intern in your organization. There, you don't need to spend the number of years that he has spent. You don't need to do the trial and errors that he had done to be able to get to this space. You can all learn that thing within the shortest time possible. Now, why, okay, take for instance, United Bank for Africa. They know that not everybody can actually remember that name. So they look for a shorter form to call it what? UBA. I'm, I know most of you don't even know that that's the full meaning of the. Is there somebody say GT Bank? It's not uh, so they say, they say GTB Bank. No, that B stands for Bank, Guarantee Trust Bank. So because they understand that people's attention span is dwindling by the day. And so you don't need to compound people's problems. So if you're going to choose a name, choose a name that is generic. So choose a name that is very, very simple to understand and to remember. And another thing I want to tell you is this, if you are going to, uh, in the near future, if you're thinking that your brand is going to go global, after checking the meaning of the word in English, check it in French, in Latin, and even in Arabic. Because uh, I'll give an example, Unilever. If Unilever has started business, let's say in uh, a small part of America, they never knew that they will be having their brands in places like Saudi Arabia. So imagine they chose a name for a brand that has a derogatory meaning in Arabic. What do you think will happen? That is why even some of the products that you consume, if you look carefully at the package, you see an inscription called halal. I mean, you see halal. Now, halal is anything that is permissible by law in Islam to consume. 
So you need to take that into cognizance. Into cognizance. So having a brand name that is simple, I don't need to tell, just choose a name. Um, something quite simple that has a very good story and a very good ring to it. So I think that's that for that. Then the next composition, that your next uh, thing you need to look at when you're building a great brand is the logo and the positioning of it. Now this is one very, very critical thing that you need to un understand. Now what is a logo? A logo simply means a graphical representation of a brand. So it can actually be the name spelt in a proper way, in, another, in, um, in a unique way, like Coca-Cola for an instance. Right? It could also be a combination of logo, like TED now, TED 3.0. Uh, I know there's a T, there's an E, there's a D, and there is something that looks like network um, icon, and then you have a 3.0. That can actually pass for a logo. And I always tell people, keep the logo simple too, such that when people get to see, they can easily remember. Now, let me shock you. Do you know that even the countries of the world actually practice branding? What is the logo of Nigeria? It is that same thing you call the coat of arm of Nigeria. What are the brand colors of Nigeria? That same thing you call the national colors. Green and white. There's nothing like green, white, green. Green is green. Are we following? <laughs> so you see that even nations actually practice what? Branding. If I want to take you into the history of branding, I will show you places even in the holy book where you have branding. But that's another talk for another day. So keep your logo very, very simple. And then the positioning is very, very important. Positioning is actually one very easy way to identify a fake brand from an original brand. I'll give an example. Guarantee Trust Bank will always have their logo on the top right. Go and check from your ATM cards to the display on your ATM screen to their, their physical locations, yes, their branches. You always will discover that Guarantee Trust Bank will always place their logo on the top right. So any day you see the logo position on the top left, you should now begin to ask yourself certain questions. Are you sure this is truly Guarantee Trust Bank? And then there's something you need to also understand is that there has to be a lot of consistency and a lot of intentionality when it comes to building a brand. It is not a this job. So if you think that because you just learned all of these things overnight, you build a great brand, I think you have something different coming. Because even at, after building a great brand, there's something called rebranding. It is an unending process. That is why I said it is what the sum total of the experience. So even beyond the identifiers, you have the association. You have the attributes. Are we following? Are you all here? Yes, sir. Are you really getting value already? Okay, then the next thing we need to talk about is what the tagline, aka motto. You know, in those days, we used to call it motto, but because things are revolving, we call them tagline. And please avoid in God we trust. They have bastardized that um, tagline too much. Now, what is a tagline? A tagline simply means a brand promise encapsulated in the shortest words as possible. Am I communicating? So now, let's talk about, let, let's be practical now. Okay, let's say, what is the, what is that line for MTN? You know, before it used to be everywhere you go, right? Then now, what is it? What they, 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 they revised it recently. What's, what's the latest one now? They are asking a question, what are we doing today? You see, you know, most of you are not even paying attention. Before it used to be everywhere you go, but now they're asking you, what are we doing today? That's the tagline. Sunny, make believe. That is a brand promise. They, they are telling you that whatever it is that they make, you have to believe it. Or whatever it is that you can actually imagine, they can actually make it so that you believe it. Now, most people don't even know that uh, tree crowns and pig milk are actually made by the same company. But you still have people who are differentiating. No, don't buy anything. Oh, just buy pig milk for me. Don't buy tree crowns. Oh, buy pig milk. Meanwhile, they are made by the same company. That is what branding does. Are we following? So tagline is simply your brand promise encapsulated in the shortest word as possible. And please also try and keep it what? Simple. At Viking Media and Communication Services, we say that innovation at its peak, that is all. We are promising that we are going to use the best innovation to take your brand to the peak of it. And so having a tagline, it is something that you must take into cognizance. Now, typography, aka fonts. Font or typography, it's one easy way to differentiate a brand from each other, right? And now there's also a rule to this particular, uh, to this particular um, aspect of branding. Now, if you are into consultancy, the kind of font you're permitted to use is different from somebody who is in the creative space. It's also different from somebody who is in the fashion space. So if you are in the creative or fashion space, you're permitted to use cursives. But if you are in the consultant space, you have to use something that is 
that has a heavy presence. Now, why all of these things are very, very important is because communication is 80% non-verbal and only 20% verbal. So, in other words, we can all sit here, say nothing, yet we're communicating volumes. And you can actually form perception of people based on the non-aspect of what they are saying. So, I'll give an example. So, imagine you're sitting close to somebody and the person is well-dressed, clean hair. The person is not saying anything and you, the, the perfume the person is wearing is gorgeous. I think the, the, the fragrance is off the chain. Now, imagine that somebody now farted. Please, will the person sitting next to you who is well-dressed looking proper, will that person be the person you suspect? Most times when those kind of things happen in the bus, who do they usually suspect? The person who is shabbily dressed. Did the guy open his mouth to say anything? No. Let's be practical. Did the guy open his mouth to say anything? No. But the guy, the guy has actually communicated volume by his disposition. So when those kind of things happen, that is actually the first person everybody's attention will go to. So why are you doing this thing now? So that's why branding is important. Uh, we are getting something here. Yeah. So typography is actually key. So the essence of this particular talk is to actually uh, spur you so that you go into um, a lot of research. The problem with our youth nowadays is that we are too lazy. We just want everything to be handed down to us. You see, uh, I always tell people, I don't know too many things, I, but I know everything about one thing. I know a little bit of every, one thing about everything, and I, know, I try as much as possible to know everything about branding. That's my core area of specialty. And I've been doing this now for a couple of years. That is mastery. So all of these things are making it look very, very easy. It's not as easy as a scene, but that is the benefit of coming to a place like this. Because you have a, you have a thousand and one things, you are, a places you are supposed to be right now, right? But you chose to want to be here. I think for that, you deserve a round of applause. Then another key component of uh, the identifiers of branding uh, talks about sound. Dun, 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 dun. What brand is that? Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> ah, the, second, the first one was empty and the second one, dun, 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 Nokia. Now, I didn't mention a brand name. I just only gave you what? A sound. Because the, uh, the competition in the market space is so stiff. So you have to look for every opportunity to be able to want to differentiate your brand from the others. And that's what brings about what is called brand loyalty. Are we following? Then the next thing we talk about what are your core values. Most businesses, are, let me I'll match the core values, the vision and the mission together. Most businesses don't even have core values, they don't even have vision, they don't even have mission. And these are defining factors. You need to know this is where we are going to. This is what we are even out to solve, which is the mission. Are we following now? And then your core values. What are the things that, what are the pillars that guides this particular organization? Is it innovation? Is it integrity? These are some of the things you really need to spell out. And these are the things that your employees, which are the, actually the greatest asset of every business, they must enshrine. Are we following? So if innovation, take for an instance, is one of your core values, it means that every single thing you have the opportunity of doing, you have to look for a thousand and one ways to do that thing better than it's been done. So core values, your mission, your vision, they are very, very important. And try as much as possible to make them short. Why? People's attention spans are dwindling, dwindling by what? By the day. These are supposed to be key pillars that are supposed to guide you. Are we following? Then another thing we talk about are your, your packaging. Now, um, a lot of people misconstrue packaging to branding. A lot of, there's a lot of misconception about packaging, a lot of misconception about branding. Somebody would just uh, probably um, print and paste on a car and say that's branding. Well, <laughs> today you are, going to, you are knowing that it's a different ball game entirely. Printing is only a fraction of branding. So, for those people who are printers and they call, they say they are into branding, when I just look at these things, I just laugh. It's a, it takes a whole lot than just um, to say it's, branding is a sum total of everything. From your staffing, the way you guys communicate, your emails, it's a whole lot. To your office outlook, to you as a person, yes, you the founder of the business, you're also a major component of the branding of your business. Because I always tell people, if you meet me before you meet my business, you want to do business with my business. If you meet my business before you meet me as an individual, you want to do business with the person behind the brand. And so it's a sum total of the entire experience that one will come in contact 
with your brand, so to speak. So I'm not going to dwell too much on your vision, mission. But what is about packaging? We're talking about your product outlook. There are some products that when you look at them on the shelf, it's very easy for you to pick them out, true or false. There can be other uh, brands of uh, noodles, but there's a particular one we all will look out for. Now, most of these guys, they use what is called, um, they, they, they explore a lot about human psychology to be able to get these things done. So let me share one big secret with you guys. If you look at the brand colors of um, Indomie, for an instance, as a brand, you discover that red is actually a secondary color. There's something called primary colors and there's something called secondary color. Your primary colors are actually the main brand colors, while the ones you added additionally are actually the secondary word colors. But why is it that anytime Indomie is going to place an advert or a billboard somewhere, they must use the color red? Now, let me help you understand. Because people just think that in the branding space, you just do things anyhow. No, it involves a lot of intentionality on a serious state. So, the main target, who are actually the major consumers of Indomie? Children. So, let me tell you why Indomie uses red. The first color a child identifies as birth is the color red. Research has shown that the first color a child identifies as birth is the color what? Red. So when you see them put their adverts on a red background, who do you think they are communicating to? The children don't have the buying power, but they, are, they have a persuasive power. So they will insist that every time they go to school, there has to be what, a package of what, of Indomie in their, what, in their lunchbox. That is why it's one of the highest selling noodles in the world. You think it's just by coincidence. No, 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 no. It takes a lot of what? Intentionality. Tell your neighbor, be intentional. Again? So your package outlook has to be fantastic. For now, you may not be able to afford something good, uh, something out of the ordinary. But you can actually engage the services of professionals. You know, it's only in this part of the world that people think that engaging the services of a professional is actually expensive. I will tell you why. When you engage a professional, there are things you are not looking out for that the professional is looking out for. And it will save you a lot of problem. I had a client who wanted to go, uh, they wanted, I think they, uh, yes, they, they wanted to go into rice milling. And uh, they contacted us, we advised them. They didn't heed to our advice. Cut long story short, they went ahead and started producing. Unfortunately for them, the standard organization and all the regulatory agencies caught the wind of the product and they had to pay heavily. They had to pay heavily. Yes, probably the guys that later did the job could have done it probably for less than what we were charging them. But they had to pay heavily. So the question is this, was it really worth it? Sometimes if you don't even survive, you can actually, that could actually be the beginning and the end of that particular business. So if you really will have to put out a package, please, there are still uh, affordable ways to get your product out. Let your product attract. Are we following? If you're designing a product for female, there has to be feminine colors. Take for an instance, pink, because ladies have these natural affiliations with the color. Okay, I'll, I'll stop there. Then the next thing is, I said is what? Your office outlook. Now, for now, for some of you, you may not be able to afford an office right now, so don't bother yourself. But your social media platform can actually be your office, so you must make sure and ensure that your social media is carrying out the profit, have a professional outlook. Kenny talked about people snapping uh, selfies with their phone, bad cameras, and posting it out on the social media space. That is a very, very bad thing to do. If there's anywhere you have to be very, very intentional about, it's your social media space. Now, out of the 8.1 billion people on planet Earth, about 4 to 5 billion people have access to the internet space. So, I always tell people, the internet space is like a market space. So, you have the options of doing two things. One, you either sell yourself as a brand, or you sell yourself as an entity. Which one will you choose? As a brand. But most of us are succeeded in selling ourselves as an entity by the nonsense that we post. And let me tell you something, the internet does not forget. We have instances where governors will say something and later they will change what they are saying or what they stand for. And people will go and pull out their tweets from many years ago to now say, ah, Shabina, now you talk this thing. So if you have your opportunity, so when you go home today, go and do what I call social media audit. Any nonsense that will not portray you as a brand, please take it down. Something as good, as simple as putting a very nice world taking picture on your profile can actually enhance your productivity or your brand outlook as a person. Are we following? I've had instances where people who are highly placed 
and they invite them to come and speak and they say, send us your picture. The guy is really struggling. He doesn't have any good picture to send. No, 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 no. That's, that's wrong. If there's anything you must take out of this meeting today, is you have to be what? Highly intentional. Say, I will be highly intentional. I will be highly intentional. Again? I will be highly intentional. We don't have time, but I'm going to be um, to talk about uh, ads and jingles. But when you go home today, go and look at ads. Okay, how many of you can remember the bank PhD ads in those days? See, most people back with bank PhD because of the kind of ads that they had. They said one day, cars will run on water. On water. I will, this is many years ago, but I still remember that ad vividly. They were the ones that predicted that one day cars will be driving themselves, true or false. It is banking, but what is the relation with banking and technology? They were simply telling that that's what the future is going to be like. Are we in that future today or not? We are. And so, having a good jingle and ads will actually help portray your brand in a very, very good light. So, these are some of the components of your identifiers. Sorry. Okay, so these are very, very good key um, points for your identifiers of, for your branding. That's the, the first aspect of branding. And let me talk a little bit about brand colors to help us understand something. So, we don't just choose brand colors for the sake of choosing brand colors. And like I said, these slides are going to be shared. So you just take the ones that are very, very important. Much later, you can actually have them. When you see us select brand colors, it's not coincidence. Yes, recently now, there's a school of thought in branding that says that why must you use a particular color? Why can't you just use another color? Well, um, in as much as they are making sense, I will also tell you that there's a particular way the human brain is actually wired. If you're talking about anything agriculture, what's the first color that comes to your mind? There's no way you can now begin to rewire the human psychology. So if you are designing or if you are in the agricultural space and you don't have green as your brand colors, then there's a problem somewhere. It now makes it very, very difficult to understand what kind of business you are into. So let's, let's, let's be practical now. If I say red and white, what brands come to your mind? Enter, uh-huh. Eta is not the only brand that has red and white now. UBA. Now, you see, just by just brand colors, you're already identifying what brands by their, by their names. And I always tell people, if you're going to choose brand colors, please remain within the space of three colors. Two can actually be your primary colors, and then one can be your, your secondary color. Don't choose colors because you like them. Why did you choose a uh, royal blue as a brand color? <laughs> because I just like royal blue. Meanwhile, the person is in a space where that has nothing to do with royal blue. No. These are why you should hire professionals. So that when your product is being displayed on shelves with other products, people can easily just go out there and, work and take out your, work, your products. People can actually identify your business. So now you understand why some brands actually have the color. And if you look at them, now you see examples of brands that are choosing different um, colors. So having said that, now let's talk to the second session of what the second component of branding. I call them what the brand word attributes. Now I said this are what the brand traits that resonate with what the customer's personal characteristics and feelings. Well, the, the whole the, the 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 summary of this particular story is this: when people come in contact with your brand, the feeling that they live with is what the brand attribute talks about. Are we following? So how do they get this feeling? Your product and services. That's why you must always be a, um, you must be a constant learner. You must always keep improving on what you're doing. The reason is this, your customers are evolving. So your business and your brand must have to evolve too. Are we following? People love recognition. People love recognition. There was a point in time, Coca-Cola had their, uh, their, uh, soft drink or soda in bottles, right? But they now understood that th times are changing and people are, uh, the way people think is actually changing. People want something convenient. So what did they do? They started packaging them in what? In car. And they also understood that people love recognition. So what did they start doing? They started writing people's name on what? Uh -uh. How many of you bought Coca-Cola because your name was on it? <laughs> simple, that's simple psychology. So what's, the, what's, what's people's experience when they come in contact with your brand? With you as a person? With your staff? I always tell people, I said the staff of every business is actually what the greatest asset of the business. That's why most businesses spend time to train their staff. For now, you may not be able to afford getting seasoned trainers to come and train your staff. 
But if you ask staff members that would have expected that you would have invited everybody to come to TED 3.0 to hear the things you are hearing, because some of the things you used to say to them at the business space is as if Oga is just talking because he's Oga. But by the time they hear a second, a, uh, a third party speaking of the same thing, it makes perfect sense. Are we following? So what is their experience? Now, the truth is this, you can never be perfect. So even when there's a default or when there is a problem with your product, how do you handle it? How do you handle it? All of these things are the sum to tell of the experience. Are we following? There are, some inst there are some institutions when you visit, from the gate they started greeting you. Are we following? From the gate they started greeting you. People love to be recognized, regardless of how small they are. Everybody wants to be recognized. What's the, if, if, you, if I pay you for your services, how am I sure that I'm getting the best value ever? Are we following? Because all of this is accumulating to what we call brand association. Where you now, you have people who are now brand loyalists that they will not use any other product apart from your product. In fact, they will now begin to become, they become evangelists and they now begin to tell other people about your, what, your product and what a service. Are we following? Let's start with you as a person because you are a very, very key component of your branding. And we're going to be looking at, yes, let's start with you as a person. Now, but however, before I proceed, now there are highlights of brand uh, attributes. One, there has to be uniqueness. The truth is this, there is only one you on planet Earth. That is why out of the 8.1 bi 8 billion people on planet Earth, and excluding the numbers of those who have died and those who are still going to come after we are long gone, there is no other person that has your, what, your fingerprint or the pattern of your iris. Are we following? So there's a, something unique about you. So your brand should be unique. I was um, watching on Instagram yesterday, there's a particular guy that has um, a quick restaurant uh, business in Lagos, he calls it the father boy. And everything about that particular setting is African. Even the, uh, the chandelier that they use is calabash. If they're going to serve you food, everything is just, they're just, it's just Africa. They are, it's just an, an African themed restaurant. They don't serve anything foreign. Everything is what is local. That is something unique about the brand. So what is unique about your own brand? Are we following? Then the next thing is sort of consistency. I talked about intentionality, I talked about consistency. You don't break a stone in the first blow. Unless that stone is not very, uh, is really not a hard stone, so to speak. So in other words, you have to be very, very consistent. You talk about Salem King. That Ken said he started following Salem King when he had how many followers? 10,000 followers. I'm pretty sure Salem didn't, didn't go to sleep on his bed and say, ha, I have 10,000 followers. Automatically, 100,000 followers will start following me. True or false? It has to be deliberate. He had to be consistent in saying the same thing over and over and over again. Are we following? You have to keep reinventing yourself. The truth is this. There's a particular person you are destined to be. But the things that you are going to attract in life is not this version of you that will attract them. It has to be an improved version of you. Let me share a quick story. When I started making media and communication services, you heard they say I started at age 21. There are people who were not going to trust me with their money because one, I didn't have pedigree. I had no um, track record or so. But I knew that if I was going, and most of the people who were patronizing us then were individuals. So we decided, okay, fine. I, of course, because I'm a strategist, that's why I do for a living. I knew that for me to begin to attract SMEs and MSMEs, that we had to upgrade. So deliberately over a period of time, we've actually upgraded. And right now, we're not necessarily, most of our, we only have very few individuals as our clients. Probably our clients who are individuals for Beacon Media and Communication Services are like 1%. While the remaining, um, let me say 98% are actually um, SMEs and MSMEs, while the other one percent are multinationals. But it was a deliberate effort. Are we following? When you hear that companies have stayed a hundred years, it is not coincidence. The problem in Africa that I discovered that Kilmo's brand is that because you started the brand, you must, it must continue in your family forever and ever. No. Who says so? What is most companies don't have succession plans. But the fact that you started a brand does not mean that you must be the one to continue the brand in the near future. Coca-Cola, I'm pretty sure, and I know for a fact, that the person who actually invented Coca-Cola as a brand is not even in the family right now. But that brand has actually stayed because there's been a, word, a consistent effort. 
And you have to have what is called a brand culture. A culture simply means a way of doing things in your organization. Are we following? If you are somebody who likes to cut corners, I'm telling you, you will not go far. But if you're somebody who likes to use the best material, if there's something that our customers know about our brand is that we'll bend over backwards to be able to satisfy them, even when things go wrong. I always will tell my staff, if it means bringing a 10 kVA or a 20 or 30 kVA generator where from ever, wherever part of the world, just to be able to get a client's job done, we will do it. But not many people understand that. And that is one of the things that our clients actually appreciate us for. So you must have a way of doing things. And please, don't copy people's brand culture because you see that as a trending things. You know, the, uh, we always try to abuse too many things. I see some organizations, you see them on social media, they're, they're just casual, they just do things anyhow, you just see them during work hours, they are flipping bottles, and you think that will also apply to your organization. It may work for them, it may not work for you. I know Microsoft doesn't have, uh, Microsoft Nigeria, they don't have resumption time. You have closure time. And if, if your wife put to bed, you have a paternity leave. That may work for them, but it may not work for Start small. Start where you are, and then begin to work to dream big, or be, dream big and work and start small. Look at what is peculiar for your organization. But however you choose to do things, make sure it is in the best interest of your clients and then your organization. Right? Uh, the mistake most people make is that we actually make products and services available and will now begin to bamboozle customers into buying our products and services. Meanwhile, the proper way of doing things is actually to understand the peculiarity of the clients and then build products and services that will meet the need. It's just like somebody who will finish cooking. I'm giving an example. It's just like you are in the eastern part of Nigeria and you go to make two shinkafa and me and Toshi and you're expecting and cajoling people to come and eat. Even when they are hungry, they will not want to eat. You know why? Because they are not familiar with their delicacy. Two of us. Two of us. But if it's in the northern part of Nigeria, you prepare me and Toshe and uh, this thing very, very well, will they eat? Yes, they will eat. And so these are key factors that you need to work taking. And then another thing is what brand positioning. I always will tell people, any industry you are operating in, you need to know the first 10 leaders of that particular industry. Study them very well. Look at what they are doing right. And then you, you also bring your own flavor into it. You have to be deliberate. There was a point in time where Yahoo was the number one company when it comes to mail, right? And internet, right? But what happened? They lost the position. And since then, they've not been able to work to recover. Now, Google became number one, and every day Google keeps improving on what they already have. Before, it was just only Gmail. Right now, you have uh, Google Forms. Yes, begin to name them. See, there are over 15 to 20 products that are out there. They are studying you. Look at, there's Google Ads. They are studying you. Okay, what do our customers need? Okay, these are Gen Z's. What are Gen Z's actually looking out for? Uh, a true story. Um, I think it was Starbucks. Yeah, Starbucks saw that all of a sudden their sales was dropping. And they now asked to ask themselves this very, very pregnant questions. Why are our sales dropping? They now discovered that all of a sudden there's a shift in the demography of their customers. That most of the people who actually drink coffee now are Gen Z's. And Gen Z's, there's something they always have in common. What is that? Always being online. So this is what they did. They started putting free Wi Fi in all of their outlets. So, of course, you're not going to sit down in somebody's outlet and be using free Wi-Fi without buying something. And that singular act alone brought back a massive sales to the organization. Are you all still here? Yes. Are you all still here? Yes. Okay. Now, there has to be a relationship. Now, the relationship that exists between you and your brand has to be a symbiotic relationship. I said earlier on that if you meet my business before you meet me, you want to do business with me. And if you meet me as an individual before you meet my business, you want to do business with my business. So in other words, you as a person, let's even talk about you as a brand, right? So, um, who is this? Huh? I'm sure that some people don't even know. This is Tony Elimelu. Okay, so what are the brands Tony Elimelu is actually associated with? Who can tell me? You have UBA, yes. You have Transcorp, a whole lot, right? Now, recently, Femi Otedola bought a large chunk of Transcorp shares. And I can tell you 
from every ramification that it was because of Tony Elimelo. So if I meet you, will I want to do business with your brand? So let's talk about you as a brand. For you to become a marketable brand, there has to be mastery. You know, people always say, I want to be out there, I want to be famous. For what exactly? Kenny has been in the digital space for about six, seven years right now, and there's a lot of mastery that's actually taking place. But this present generation wants to be famous for nothing. No, sir, it doesn't work that way. I've been in the branding space now for 12 years. And I always tell people, I said the statistics when it comes to business, we've actually defined it. They said the first out of 10 businesses, that the first uh, seven will fail in the first five years. We have treated that one. Then I said the remaining fraction, only one business will survive after 10 years. We are 12 years as a brand. But there's a particular thing that you bring to the table. So mastery is actually the first one. That thing you are doing, can it be possible that you are the person who is the best in that particular area? And Martin Luther King Jr. said something that I will never forget. He said, whatever it is you find doing, do it such that God had called you in this, at this time in history to do it. He said, do it so well, such that the living, the dead, and the unborn couldn't do it any better. So let's do a small statistics. So let's assume that 8, million people had, 8 billion people have died before now. And we have another 8 billion people on planet Earth. Another 8 billion people will come after now. That's how many billion? Mathematicians, how many billion? So what he's saying is that in the midst of 24 billion people, there shouldn't be anyone as good as you. How much time have you invested in that thing you're doing? Malcolm Gladwell in the book outlines, he said for everybody who you call a genius, that those people have invested nothing less than 10,000 hours. Nothing less than what? 10,000 hours for them to become geniuses. When you see Cristiano Ronaldo take free kicks and the thing will enter the net, or you see, there was a point in time, Leon Messi, I think this one I've, I've witnessed severally, the guy doesn't need to raise his head to know that that particular ball is hitting, will enter the net. Once he gets, his head is down. Once he gets a particular uh, position in the field, he just knows that this is the position and he hits the ball. And severally, before he raises his head, the ball is already in the net. That's mastery. How many of you are willing to commit to becoming the best in what you do? Like I said, I don't know too many things, but when it comes to the issue of branding, I am very, very grounded in it. That's the space I choose to operate. And that's the space I choose not to allow anybody out with me. So the question is you as a person. So now that's that, mastery. Then the next thing is your dress sense. It's only God that looks on the human, the content of your heart. Every other human being will judge you from the outward appearance. I remember I said I'm, communication is how many percent non-verbal? 80% non-verbal and what? 20% what? Verbal. So in other words, what, what you are seeing accounts for little. People will judge you from the things you're not saying. I've had the opportunity of sitting on, um, on several panels of interviews. And most times, some people are just saying whatever they are saying. Somebody among the panelists is actually looking you up on social media to know the kind of person we want, want to employ. You don't know, but I'm telling you now one secret of panelists. When you see somebody among the panel on, on the phone, the person is not being, they're actually looking you up. Because some of you will come there and tell lies. And one very easy way to know the kind of person you are is to look you up on social media space. How many of you are google able? If you are google able, that means if I Google your name, I can find something on you. I'm not thinking about your Facebook and Instagram page, Joe. How many of you are actually google able? <laughs> Only one person. And this is the 21st century. At least I know. Uh, of a billionaire in Nigeria, if he's going to do business with you, if he can't not find anything to read up on about you on the online space, that meeting is cancelled. You know why? The guy understands what is called negotiation. So he wants to know the kind of person you are. So that when he meets one-on-one -on -one with you, he knows the angle to come at you. Because at the end of the day, he wants to win in that negotiation. And so when he cannot find anything about you on the online space, he just knows that this particular person is not my kind of person. And so we must be deliberate about building our what, our online uh, visibility, so to speak. Now, beyond building your online visibility, you must make sure you are matching what you are promising you. Know, because you cannot just say, I'm the best, I'm the best, I'm the best, I'm the best. And people will now hand you over their money and then you mess things up. 
you have actually done more harm than worse than good. So that's why that is what mastery. Make your mistakes. Learn. Be a lifelong learner. Somebody said that the 21st century illiterate is not somebody who cannot read and write, but somebody who has refused to what to learn, unlearn, and what and relearn. At least in my lifetime, I've seen certain words in English being changed in the dictionary. If you look at dictionaries of 1998 or so, you will discover that the word pronunciation has O before the U and then the N. But if you look at modern day dictionary, you will now discover that the word O has been expunged from the word pronunciation. Go and check. At least that one has been witnessed. Before, you could spell truly with double L. But if you spell truly now with double L, you are wrong. So things are actually evolving. So you must have to work to keep up with the work with the trend. Please don't allow people, because I say social media now, don't allow people to now to begin to pressure you to now say, ah, because I'm seeing things happening on social media. You want to be like that, please. So most of the people there, 80% of them are living fake life. But all we are saying is that it's actually a platform for you to be able to want to sell yourself. Are we following? So your dress sense is very, very key. If you don't know how to dress, please go and learn. There are YouTube, tons of YouTube videos that will teach you how to dress. And when we say learn how to dress, we don't mean go and break the banks. Please, there's Kaswambechi not far from here. It's true. It is only you that know you went there to buy it. Right? And by the time you wash it very, very well, if you know you cannot afford the designers for now, don't put yourself under pressure. There is time for everything. Right? There is time for everything. So when you go there and you select good stuff and you wash it and you iron it like your life depends on it, I am telling you. <laughs> Are we following? The fact that you're not any C figures figures now does not mean you shouldn't smell good. There are cheap perfumes that still smell good. Please, don't kill the next person close to you by body odor. No. Practice good hygiene. On a serious note, these are things that people don't take for, they take for granted. But these are the little, little big things that actually accumulate to so much. And be knowledgeable. Please, know something about everything and know everything about one thing. Like me, I'm not a football fan, but if you tell you a little bit about football, I'll have a thing or two to, uh, to see about football. I'm not a medical student. I've never been one. I don't intend to be one, even in the next life. But you, you talk about medicine, I'll have a thing or two uh, to see about it. But when you come to the field of branding, I have so much to what uh, to say. Be a person whose conversation will actually be laced with value. Quick story. Before Barack Obama became the president of the United States of America, but it was clear that he was going to be the president, he, he went to um, a diner, or more like a cafe, and um, he had just a little breakfast, and um, he left. And so the person who was the waiter came and said, ah, this is Barack Obama. So the guy packaged the thing in the solo feed, snapped it and put it on eBay, and said, who cares to eat the leftover breakfast? of Barack Obama, you don't want to know how many million they paid just to eat the leftover of a human being. The guy was not yet president. That is what taking your brand serious can actually do. When you hear that they are selling the gloves of Michael Jackson for millions of dollars, it's just gloves. But the question is, who wore the gloves? That's why a lot of intentionality and, what, and consistency is what is required. So, by the time you put a whole lot of work with your brand identifiers that I've mentioned, and then your attributes are correct, I'm telling you, you are going to have a very good brand association. It's not something, it's not rocket science. It's not something that just happens, no, at the, no, 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 at the instant. It takes a lot of work being deliberate. Are we following? It's accumulative of it. You might not be there yet, but have a vision of where you want to be. Are we following? Have a vision of where you want to be. Be deliberate about working with it, to, towards it. Be careful about the people you keep around you. These things are very, very crucial. I don't have too many friends, but the friends who I have are actually people who inspire me to do so much. I always tell my client, my staff in the office, our competitions are not Nigerian companies, please. We run a branding and a media agency, but our competition are not Nigerian companies. Our competition are actually international companies. So we are studying them, what are they doing different that we are not doing? We might look small, but the end goal is to become the best branding agency in the world. My goal is to become the number one brand consultant in the world. And of course, you know, it's going to take a lot of plenty of money to actually get me to consult for you for one hour. 
I always tell people, say one of the reasons why I like doing certification courses for top Ivy Leagues with top Ivy League schools is such that the day you walk into my office and you see a Harvard or a Stanford or a Yale diploma hanging on the wall of my office, by yourself, you program whatever fee you wanted to, you wanted to pay me, two of us. It's not that that certificate is going to teach me something different from what I already know, but it's just being deliberate. Are we following? It's just being deliberate. So if whatever it is you're doing, if there are no intentionality laced with it, then it tells me that you're not going far. You have to be serious. You have to pull yourself by the bootstraps. Are we following? I didn't get here today by just mere coincidence. I've read, I am reading, I will continue to read. I already just told you about the latest trend in branding and I just told you why for me that postulation is not correct. I don't pride to know everything. But I also keep an open mind. You know, she, the, the anchor said, how many of you are willing to, to keep an open mind? It is something that every day will learn. I learn by observation. I expose myself intentionally to certain level of information that inspires me. There are some things I expose myself to I can't even sleep at night. You know why? Because I'm thinking, how do I replicate this thing? And I add my own personal touch to it to make it look completely different. Several people are stepping to our office and they're like, wow! Now, most of these things, when I'm going around, when I'm traveling, I just sit there and say, hey, this thing is fine. Oh. Sometimes if I can take pictures, I take pictures. I come back and I ask myself, how can we replicate this? And then a little bit of this, a little bit of that, at the end of the day, you get to see that it begins to what you add up. I have a man, um, more like an elder brother, who will never take anything other than pig milk. And one day I told him, I said, bon, do you know that pig milk and three crabs are actually made by the same company? The guy was, was blown away. But guess what? He was still sticking to his word, his pig milk. Why? Because the brand identifies and the, word and the attributes are just right for it. Are we following? You also need to be abreast of what is happening in the market. When Cowbell came to the scene, when Promacido brought Cowbell to the scene, Cowbell was selling sachet uh, milk for uh, 2020 Naira. Pig milk was still up there. But they realized that, Omo, um, if we don't step up our game, these guys will soon put us out of world, out of market. Because they are market leaders. So what did they do? They too, they started packaging their products in what? In sachet. And today, they are still maintaining their number one position, at least in Nigeria. Are we following? Of course, write down your questions during the course of the panel session, you will begin to ask your question. So as we begin to wrap up this particular talk this morning, it is important that you need to understand that what brand association will bring for your business or your brand is what, what I call brand loyalists. These are the people who become evangelists of your brand. They begin to speak of your name everywhere they go. Have you done business with this particular person? Have you considered this particular organization? Why? Because their experience with you is wow. I remember, like I said, it's not magic. It is something that you are highly worth intentional about. And then you have to involve a lot of strategy. You have to involve a lot of strategy. Now, the truth is this, as your business is growing, the strategy that you might have adopted may not be the same. Things are ever evolving, right? If you had like 10 clients, if you had like 10 staff, and you now have like 20 to 40 staff, or you have like two branches, you know that the strategy will have to work to change. So you have to keep evolving. The truth is this, if this guy was buying your product before as a single person, he's now a married man, he's now a CEO, he's, there's, there's, a, there's a difference in what in taste and what and style. That is why companies like Honda will bring another brand called Acura. Now, how many of you know that Honda and Acura are the same company? Most people don't know. Because each of these products are meant to service different clientele. Starter, are we following? Yes. Most people don't even know that, um, let me see, I think there's one. Uh, Ven uh, is it Venza? Uh, yeah, Venza, no, not Venza. Uh, Lexus and Toyota are actually the same company. Most people don't know. One is meant to cater for the regular kind of guys, and one is meant to cater for one for the high, because they understand that the people who they are serving are ever evolving. And so they have to always, they have to keep going back to the strategy board to now begin to look at how to be able to create an effective strategy to remain market leaders. That is why every year, people are always looking out for the Apple launch. How many of you look, me, I watched Apple launch this year from the beginning to the end. It is something that people look out for every year. 
Because they understand that they have to keep evolving if they must remain relevant in the world, in the market space. So every year there's a market launch where they bring out new products. So they are improving on the iris, on the eye watches, on the iPhone, the eyeglass, everything that every product they have to. They have guys who are in the lab. All they do from morning till evening is how to improve on the already existing technology. And so you as a person must also adopt that kind of uh, mindset, so to speak. And like I said, there are things that are supposed to come to you now, but it's not this version of you that is waiting for. So you have to be highly intentional. Say I'll be highly intentional. And then the final thing, yeah, is what is sustenance and what and what and rebranding. So even when you build a very, very big good brand, there's a need for you to work to rebrand. That is why some products, after a few years, you will see they will, they will, they will, they will rejig the product package and they say they added 28 vitamins and minerals. It is the same thing. You are eating rice over and over again and not knowing that you are eating rice. Probably they will serve you rice and beans today. They will serve you jello rice tomorrow. They will serve you your father rice next tomorrow. They will serve you Caribbean rice. It is still rice. It's just strategy and strategy. Branding and rebranding. That is why some organizations, after 10 years, you see they will, they, will, they will reject their logo, telling you that it's a new, improved version of the organization. All is in a bit to, to keep your attention. The reason is this. The human being easily get bored. Humans, by nature, will easily get what? Bored. When they told me I was going to be speaking for one hour, I said, I can't speak for one hour because I understand human psychology very, very well. People are not going to sit down for one hour listening to me. An American professor taught me many years ago, he said, anything you are going to say, say within the confines of 20 to 45 minutes because after then, every other thing you are saying is just going like this. Are we following? That's why I prepared my slideshow. I'm almost wrapping up. I'll soon be out of your face. Are we following? <laughs> How many of you have gained something today? How many of you have gotten value? Are we following? So there's a need for us to want to strategize and what and re-strategize. That is how you win battle. Remember, it is not about the size of the world, of the army in a fight. It is about the quality of the strategy that goes into a fight. That's why an army with just 300 men can actually defeat a battalion with 15,000 men. The difference is strategy. The strategy they all came to battle with. And so uh, what we'll leave questions and answers for much later. So very, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very, very much for your time. I believe I've not been able to bore you. Thank you. God bless you.